And yeah, man, you know, I appreciate uh, you talking with us. You know, my name is Charlie Dell. I've uh, worked at Millions for a while now, I'm talking to all sorts of different athletes, you know, across different sports. Obviously, we have a lot of fighters and uh, contact sports and stuff like that. But it's kind of interesting to get um, perspectives from all, uh, all sorts of different sports and um, how people kind of got here, you know. So just to get started, man, can I just get you to like introduce yourself and your like, your name and your sport kind of a thing? Yeah. So uh, my name is Miguel LeBlanc. Uh, I'm a competitive arm wrestler. I think this is the first arm wrestling event you guys are working with, uh, if I'm correct there. So, you know, we're kind of branching out uh, into the sport a bit more. We, um, I just interviewed um, a woman, uh, Danielle Evanson. She's a um, uh, I know Danielle well. Yeah. Big, big things in the sport, too. So, uh, you know, we're kind of branching out a little bit and uh, checking out something new. It's uh, pretty exciting, you know? For sure. Yeah, I mean, we're sort of technically at that point where it's like a, com- it's like a combat sport, but not quite to the level of the other sports I've seen on your platform. Well, you know, there's a place for everything, you know, especially uh, as MMA and the, kind of the UFC gets bigger and bigger, you know, we there's a lot of more niche uh, kind of sports uh, that are coming out, you know, like obviously Power Slap is a big one. And, uh, you know, there's sure. really, um, a, sp- a spot for everyone, man. It's really cool to see. I'm just kind of curious, man, like what kind of um, drove you to the sport of arm wrestling, you know, like what kind of um, got you inspired to really take it up as like a passion, you know? Yeah, so I always arm wrestled just at school. Sort of as a kid, I would arm wrestle with my dad sometimes at home. Um, but towards grade 9 or 10, so middle of high school here, I was around 15 or 16, I sort of started watching the sport on YouTube. Uh, I'm sure the same as a lot of people got in through, through Devin Laird, uh, seeing a lot of his viral videos, you know, him pulling half through the mountain and uh, stuff like that. And he was actually in Toronto, uh, the city that I grew up in, one of the days I was in school, uh, I believe 2019. And I, I just went down to check it out with a buddy and I got to go to my first arm wrestling practice there. Um, it was an awesome experience just getting to pull Devin and quite a few other Canadian pros because I know there was a tournament that day. And I was just hooked immediately. Uh, I started going to practice the next week. Oh, that's incredible, man. You know, it must have been pretty surreal. He's obviously kind of like the guy that a lot of people kind of think of, you know, when they think of like the pinnacle of arm wrestling, you know, and uh, it must have been pretty, uh, pretty cool, man. You know, I, um, you know, it's kind of fascinating, you know, seeing some of these other sports kind of um, make a name for themselves, you know, and seeing people kind of able to rise to the ranks like him and uh, kind of uh, be popular off of that and, um, you know, have it kind of be a more of a mainstream thing, you know. Um, I'm kind of curious though, like you said, it's kind of something you've always done, right? Like arm wrestling, uh, people, you know, and maybe, uh, you know, maybe you're pretty good at it and always kind of liked it, but did you have like kind of a moment where you're like, Hey man, maybe I could take this arm wrestling just from local things to like, maybe I can be kind of like this Devin Larry, you know? So I was actually uh, not, not, not very good at all when I was in school before I started training. Uh, I, I definitely don't think I took the natural talent route. Um, but I've always been able to dedicate myself to things in terms of just putting in the work. Um, so after I got to pull Devin and just get that practice under my belt, I sort of, of course, I didn't really know what his level was. I couldn't really tell the strength, but just being around that kind of energy, like that world level, like number one at a sport sort of just drove me to put in the work. And then I started doing as much research as I could. And from there I started, competing at tournaments as soon as they reopened back in the end of 2020. Uh, of course, me getting into the sport in 2019, there was that shutdown uh, during that period, uh, early 2020. So I had a lot of time to train, but not much exposure to the competition scene. So as soon as that opened up in tw- end of 2020, early 2021, I dove in and I started getting some pretty decent results. So from there, that's when I realized that I had some potential. That's awesome, man. You know, it sounds like you put a lot of work into it to kind of really uh, legitimize yourself, you know, and kind of, uh, you know, take yourself to the next level where you need to be, man. That's uh, it's really cool, you know. And every athlete, obviously, you know, you, you know what you need to do, I feel like, as an athlete, you know. And um, yes. having a support system around you kind of helps you uh, be the best self, man. And uh, that's cool uh, to hear about the journey. You know, a lot of younger people can uh, be inspired by that, you know. I, um, I'm i kind of uh, curious, though, man. Like, um, all, all athletes, right, obviously um, – you're out there training, competing. It's brutal, right? Uh, in any sport. And um, I'm just kind of curious, like, what kind of motivates you in your career? Like, some people, whether it's like winning a world championship or making some money or that kind of a thing, and uh, they have something that kind of motivates their training and career. You know. So for me, I would say it's definitely uh, winning a world championship. 
So that's actually the next event I'm going to in about three and a half, four weeks. I'll be in the World Championships in Moldova, uh, competing in the under-23 category. But definitely long-term, uh, I would like to win a World Championships. I mean, the, I'm sure there'll be some money in the sport definitely moving forward in that professional setting. But as a competitor and to just sort of fulfill my competitive spirits and desires, uh, I think becoming a world champion and knowing that you're the best at something uh, is definitely the most satisfying thing to strive for. And, you know, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, uh, yeah, it's cool, man. I, um, you know, I'm, I, I kind of like to ask, though, like um, the last arm wrestler I talked to, um, there's, you know, there's a boxer named Triple G. And uh, I'm not sure if you know him, but uh, he's not the biggest guy in the world, right? And uh, like, he's certainly not a heavyweight. But he does kind of these unconventional um, strength things. Like he does like the grip trainer and uh, they roll around kettlebells and stuff to like strengthen your forearms and stuff. And uh, he can like out grip heavyweights, you know, like a big heavyweight would go up and he can like squeeze his hand. And because he does these kind of like different things, right? And maybe works different muscles than he does. And I'm just kind of curious to like, uh, obviously in arm wrestling, do you guys kind of have any things like that that's like kind of different from other sports, you know? Yeah, I would say definitely uh, forearm strength is. The key uh, to arm wrestling, it's probably the thing that we focus on more than anyone else. If you take a look at an arm wrestler's training plan throughout the week, it's probably got some kind of forearm element every single day. Um, so sort of strengths that you don't normally use every day, like pronating your hand over or supinating those small muscles, wrist flexion, extension, um, sort of different kinds of finger strength, because you need all of it. You need to have balance, and it's very specific to our sport, I find. Um, of course, every sport has its specific strengths that they sort of have their weird strength that they can show off. Um, another one in arm wrestling would be your bicep and your arm angle strength. So a lot of arm wrestling is sort of in this partial range. So maybe from a full range sort of typical training bodybuilding style, we wouldn't be considered uh, outliers in terms of strength. But if you shorten the angle to about like 90 degrees where we would be on the arm wrestling table, there are some ridiculous weights that get lifted by people in our sport for sure. Well, that's fascinating. You know, um, that uh, Danielle Levinson uh, and I were kind of talking about that too. And it's kind of fascinating, you know, seeing the different things. Um, and she mentioned a lot, the kind of the wrist, uh, strengthening the wrist, you know, because you can be like, have all the arm strength, but you, you know, to have that kind of flexing and strength too, where you can like move your wrist around and uh, yes. kind of the durability too, you know, it's kind of fascinating. And uh, sure. uh, like, uh, like uh, wondering, uh, like, would kind of like climbing, maybe rock climbing, be like a decent uh, workout for arm wrestling? You know, because that might uh, uh, get your fingers a bit tougher too. You know, very much actually. So, I've had this conversation with quite a few of my uh, arm wrestling buddies. The sports that translate the best to arm wrestling. So, like, some we we find out someone's coming new to practice and they give us their background. The strongest guys are always either rock climbers or motocross guys. So very grip heavy, sort of forearm, hand and finger strength sports definitely have very good carryover. Of course, it's kind of a fascinating one too. I didn't really consider that, but you know, you, you know, they're gripping on uh, in the worst train possible the whole time. That's uh, that makes sense, you know. That's a uh, mm. pretty uh, tight forearms, you know. And then that's cool. So obviously, you know, um, we're kind of newer to the sport and uh, arm wrestling, you know, millions. We, uh, we're talking to you and Daniel Levinson and, uh, you know, it's been a blast, man. But, uh, you know, we kind of, um, we like to ask athletes kind of if they have athletes that inspired them, you know, what you guys were coming up and making a name for yourself. And obviously Devin Lair is like the big guy that uh, kind of a lot of people flock to. But I'm just kind of curious, is he kind of the guy that you look at in arm wrestling as like your guy or is there someone else who kind of motivates you, you know? So I obviously, uh, I'm looking at more of the lighter weight guys in terms of my inspirations because I'm, I'm a lighter guy in terms of the weight class that I'm competing in. So guys from overseas, there's quite a few like um, Giannis Omlins from Latvia and uh, Engin Terzi from Turkey. So a lot of lighter weight guys who I've just gone through the archives and sort of watched footage of them from 90s, 2000s, 2010s. Um, those guys are really inspiring to see what they do. And they put a lot of their training out there. So I was using quite a bit of their knowledge as a guide when I sort of started out. And I actually uh, do work with a coach from overseas. Uh, his name is Sandra Chedis. Um, he's a world champion and he's definitely been a big inspiration and a big help to me. Sort of tuning in my training and getting that one-on-one -on -one 
sort of specialization and building my knowledge with everything that he's been able to help me with. Oh, that's, uh, that's um, you know, fascinating that they kind of have their training footage on the internet too, where you can uh, pan to the sport and, mm -hmm. and then uh, maybe they can have something tricky little wrist strengthening thing that you can borrow from somebody and, uh, you know, use techniques from someone else. That's really cool too. I always found that kind of aspect of combat sports really fascinating too, where you can see all these people that you like and pick and choose little things. And that's really cool, dude. And, uh, you know, you like to see um, arm wrestling kind of blow up and we're at the spot where it is now where um, we got all these people and uh, there's a good kind of like community of it too, you know, where you're like training and comparing uh, things, man. That's, um, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, it sounds like you got a good mindset for the sport, you know, like obviously best of luck on everything coming up, man. We uh, don't want to take up too much of your time, you know, but uh, just to kind of wrap it up, man, I wanted to give you the floor. If you got anything you want to promote on uh, millions.co coming up that we can check out from you or anything like that. Uh, well, I guess anyone who's interested in watching the world championships, I guess you'll get to see me there in the under 23 year old category. And then uh, when it comes to the actual events, um, I'll try to put on a show, but I don't think this match is going to end very well for my opponent, to be quite honest. Awesome, man. I love the confidence. You know, it sounds like uh, you're at a good place for the event. Obviously, uh, best of luck on everything. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to check out the event. You know, I haven't personally checked out a full arm wrestling uh, event. You know, like, uh, you know, I've seen some uh, videos and stuff, highlights, obviously. But, uh, you know, I like to kind of check out a proper event, you know, like uh, with Power Slap and Bare Knuckle and all these things going on. You know, I'm a big fight fan and I like checking out, you know, man. It's awesome, yeah. The atmosphere is good because, like you mentioned, the community. Uh, we're all very close knit, pretty much. Everyone knows everyone, uh, for the most part. So, the crowd can get pretty into it at most of these mm -hmm. events. That's awesome, man. You know, I'm excited to check it out, man. And uh, you know, I'll check it out on Amelia's.co. And um, yeah, man, maybe we can talk, chat again one of these days. You know, uh, celebrate a win, kind of a thing. And uh, if you ever got anything you want to promote, man, uh, someone from the team, we got your back. Awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome, man. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.